everyone so today we are looking at lead code 1762 it's a question called buildings with an ocean view and what we have to figure out in this question is if we have an array which represents the heights of buildings and we are we are looking at the buildings from uh, east to west which buildings at the index are going to have an ocean view so let's take a look at the prompt here. There are n buildings in a line. You're given an integer array heights of size n that represents the heights of the buildings in the line. The ocean is to the right of the buildings, and a building has an ocean view if the building can see the ocean without obstructions. Formally, a building has an ocean view if all the buildings to the right have a smaller height. And we want to return a list of the indices, zero indexed, of buildings that have an ocean view sorted in increasing order. Okay, so here, example one, we have four, two, three, and one. So one is going to have an ocean view. Three is going to have an ocean view. Two is not going to have an ocean view because it's smaller than three. And four is going to have an ocean view. And what we are returning is the indices uh, in, in reverse order, essentially, of zero, two, and three, the buildings that have an ocean view. Similarly here, every single one of these buildings will have an ocean view. One, you can see the ocean if it's to the right. Two, you can see the ocean. Three and four. And here, uh, let's see, we can see four. So that's index three. Zero, one, two, three. The value is four. So we're going to uh, have the index there, three. Two, you cannot see the ocean. Three, we cannot see the ocean because this four is obstructing it. And one, we cannot see the ocean because the three is obstructing it. And so here, building at index three is the only one that has an ocean view. Okay, example four, we have two, 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 and we can see that this is the only building at index three that can see the ocean. Everything else is, is um, not able to see it. You can see two is not above this two right over here. Okay, so let's think about this. So let's say we have, <clears throat> we have this array, four, two, three and one, okay? And we want to get what indices, we'll just go ahead and put in the indices here, zero, one, two, and three, okay, as the indices. And we wanna figure out which one of these buildings has an ocean view and return those indices. So we know that the building to the right is always going to have an ocean view. Okay, so we can create a result array and we can go ahead and push that three index into, into uh, our result array. We'll just go ahead and label this result array. Okay. Now, when we go to three, we can check, is three larger than the uh, last element here in our result array? So here at index three, it's one, three is larger. So we're going to go ahead and put in two. Okay, we're going to iterate backwards here to this two, and we're going to check, is the value at index one uh, larger than the value than the last value in our result? It is not. It's, the, it's, uh, it's actually smaller because the value is three at index two, and here the value is two. So we are going to go ahead and skip that. And then here we'll get to four and we'll check, is the value at index zero, which is four, is it larger than the last value in our result? It is larger, so we're gonna go ahead and push in that zero, okay? And that's gonna give our result. And we can see here, we actually want it in reverse order. So all we can do is just dot reverse this. Okay, let's go over this one more time just so it's clear. Okay, um, let me back up here and we'll just kind of step through this each time and maybe label the variables a little bit more clear. Okay, so here we have four, two, three, one. Okay, we're going to have a result array that's going to contain the indices.
And from the start, we can go ahead and put in that first index. So we can go ahead and get the length of our input array and just get the last, uh, the last index, so the length minus one, so heights.length minus one, and go ahead and put that into our result array as the start. Okay, and now what do we wanna check? We wanna iterate backwards through this list. We wanna go from the last to the first. And so what we wanna do is we wanna check what is the current height, okay, current height Is going to equal is going to equal the index i that is going backwards. Okay, so we can say current height is going to be heights at index i. Okay, and now we just want to check if the current height. is greater than uh, the last element in result. Okay, so we can say um, result at result.len minus one. Okay, and if it is, then all we're gonna do is push the index i into uh, our result. So we just do result.push index i. Okay? So that's pretty much it. It's not too bad. It's just a matter of making sure you keep track of these indices. And uh, there's just a lot of ways you can get bugs in here. But the logic is actually not too bad with this question. Okay, so let's go ahead and code this up. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and create um, our starting value okay so we can just call this start and we can just uh, set this to the very last index in our height input so we can just do heights dot length minus one okay that's going to give us our very last index now we want to go ahead and create a result array and then just go ahead and uh, put in that start okay so that sets up our initial uh, our initial result now we want to iterate backwards from our input array. So we want to say let i equal heights dot length minus two, okay? Because we already have the first one in there, so we just want to get the one um, that's next over. And while i is greater than or equal to zero, we're going to just do i minus minus, okay? Now what do we want to do? We want to check if the last element in the result is less than the current element, the current height that we're at. Okay, so we can just create a variable, say let cur building, uh, we can just say cur building, okay, and we can go ahead and set this to heights at i. Okay? And now we want to get our last building and we can set this to result result dot length minus one. Okay, so as we are iterating through the heights, that's our current building, we're comparing it to our last building, which is our last element in that result. And now all we have to do is check if the current building is uh, greater than the last building. And the last building, remember, is the index. This last building is going to be the IDX. Okay? So we do what we could do actually is just put this into our heights. Okay. This is why this question can be a little bit confusing because in the results we're storing the index but we're doing a comparison with the values. So we can just check if current building is greater than last building. We just want to go ahead in our result push in that i. 
push in that index. Okay, and now lastly, we want to reverse the whole thing. So we just want to return result.reverse. Okay, go ahead and run that, and, and we are good. Okay, so let's take a look at time and space complexity for this. Okay, so relative to the input, how many times are we traversing over our input array relative to the size of the input? We're only doing one pass through this, uh, this input array. We're going from the end to the beginning. Okay, so because of that, our time complexity here is going to be O of O of n time. All right. Now, what about space complexity? How many times are we, how much space are we creating relative to the input? Well, the worst case is, is that every building would be part of our result array. Okay, so our space complexity, worst case, would also be linear space. Okay, which isn't bad. All right, so that is lead code number 1762, buildings with an ocean view. This is not really that difficult of a problem. It is asked at Facebook a lot, and I've noticed that Facebook tends to ask these types of questions that are fairly simple, but there's bugs like this that you can easily step into, which is when you're doing these comparisons, you're, you're storing the indices, but you're comparing the values. So you just want to make sure that this is like kind of like walking through a minefield. You want to make sure that you, know, you, you meticulously um, check every single line of code that you're putting down um, as to avoid bugs. Uh, okay, so lead code 1762. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you on the next one.